さとの町あかれ身寄りの骨埋めしやけ土に今は白い花咲くああ許すまじ原爆を Fellow peace workers, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to acknowledge our indebtedness to the organizers of this groundbreaking conference for inviting me to make the closing remarks. I will do my best to meet this challenge. It is a great honor for me to、um, address、uh, this occasion in this、uh, great hall where Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. delivered his.、Uh, Prophetic speech beyond Vietnam in 1967, exactly one year before his tragic assassination. That speech was a decisive challenge to the war in Vietnam and has subsequently served as a rallying point for all who work for peace and justice. Today, Dr. King's words remain present, providing a diagnosis. Of our planet's gravest illnesses, the giant triplets of racism, extreme materialism, and militarism, and a cure, a true revolution of values. The participants, thank you. <clears throat> the participants in this conference have worked hard in Dr. King's legacy. I congratulate you on having the courage to confront the greatest form of violence ever known and the willingness to dig deeply to discover the causes and connections that will unlock the door to the future without nuclear weapons and full of happiness for all. I am here tonight because a sea change is taking place in the realm of nuclear disarmament and because I am part of that big change. As mayor of Hiroshima and president of Mayors for Peace. <clears throat> Mayors live among our citizens. We typically try to create and often succeed in creating trusting relationships between our citizens and the city hall based on facts and mutual respect. For example, when they come to us with a problem, such as uncollected garbage, we have to deal it with it right away. And we have to recognize the fact. And we have to get results as well. We are also duty bound to represent our citizens to speak for them when they need to be heard, nationally and internationally. Being a mayor of, of a great city has many privileges. Perhaps the most important one is that it is a fantastic learning experience, which happens every day. Having taught many students in universities, I knew that teaching really means learning. But being a mayor is a bigger learning experience. And I wish, I, I wish all of you could be a mayor of either Hiroshima or Nagasaki for a few days. But Fortunately for Hiroshima and Nagasaki and for all of you, there is a much better, easier, and efficient way to learn the same lessons that Maya Tawe and I had to learn the hard way. Please visit one or both of the cities. If you have done so already, please add one more trip. The citizens of both cities will welcome you more enthusiastically than anywhere else in the world. I'm sorry. I know that、uh, there are some、um, city representatives here, but I have to say a few good things about Hiroshima and Nagasaki. So, excuse my、um, advertising <laughs> words here. And、uh, also, they will teach you the most valuable lessons, or at least one of the most valuable lessons you could learn. And you will become friends with them forever. You might want to tour the Ebo Museums, listen to the testimonies of a Hibakusha, visit the old baseball park in Hiroshima where 10 million folded paper cranes are, were sent from children all over the world each year, and、um, 
enjoy many more attractions uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki have to offer. I guarantee honestly that your trip will convince you that we must act together now to abolish all nuclear weapons from the surface of our Earth. In other words, you'll have gained a keener sense of urgency about the life or death of this precious planet and human lives on it. The sense of urgency is one thing I truly would like to emphasize because that is one ingredient that's lacking in the international arena at this point. Let me tell you about an encouraging and invigorating outcome I had the privilege of observing firsthand recently. Just two weeks ago, the Interaction Council annual meeting was held in Hiroshima. It is also known as the OB, that stands for Old Boys um, Summit. There were no, no members of uh, states who were women at the time. Uh, OB Summit because its members are former presidents, prime ministers, and other senior statesmen, and actually women. The council has adopted the Hiroshima Declaration and issued a more specific and detailed communique in which they emphasize the points I'm trying to make tonight. To paraphrase their discoveries in my somewhat biased way, their trips to Hiroshima went far beyond their expectations. As heads of states in charge of the future of not only their own countries but of the entire world, and as an intelligent humanitarian statesman, they certainly did their homework. They did understand what actually had happened in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But they actually pulled up to a higher dimension by going through the museums and listening to the testimonies of the Hibaksha and viewing more than 10 million paper cranes. In other words, the senior statesmen understood that the Hibaksha have known hell on earth, had glimpsed the end of the world, and most, if not all of them, have devoted themselves for decades to keep the rest of the world from ending that way. The Hibaksha's message is very simple. No one else should ever suffer as we did. One important point in these words is that the expression no one includes literally everyone, including those you would normally label as enemies. Thus, it is... <clears throat> Thus, it is a message of reconciliation and not retaliation. And I had difficulty trying to describe you know, what these senior statesmen actually felt in Hiroshima until I found a good sermon by Reverend uh, Dr. Martin Luther King in his address called Remaining Awake Through a Great Revolution, delivered in 1968. Let me quote. It is no longer a choice, my friends, between violence and nonviolence. It is either nonviolence or non existence. And the alternative to disarmament, the alternative to a greater suspen suspension of nuclear tests, the alternative to strengthening the United Nations and thereby disarming the whole world, may well be a civilization plunged into the abyss of annihilation. And our early habitat would be transformed into an inferno that even the mind of Dante could not imagine. And if that is what a visit to Hiroshima does, I would like to encourage all of you to visit Hiroshima with your own eyes and listen to the Hibaksha with your own ears. And I would like to especially emphasize, together with the senior statesmen's recommendation, that the leaders of the world, especially the heads of the nuclear weapon states, you know, visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki this year.